Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well. If you are feeling stressed when you're doing all your scenery and dressing up industries, this one's for you. This is all about getting more for less. We're going to talk about how to build and decorate our industries with some high value scenery items. All right, so there are lots of quick things you can do to add a lot of value to your route as you're building them. So we are over here on the northwest side of Coxon, uh, on the uh, St. Louis Southwestern Coxon sub. So we have a little creek here we're working on, and uh, previously I had had just some spline grass and things here. I uh, got the textures all painted up, and so we're just going to add some bushes along the creek. So I have talked about this before in one of my videos about uh, farmland. So when you have uh, creeks and whatnot or different rivers and things, there usually is a lot of uh, bushes and trees and shrubs and those things along the edge. So adding a combination of those of different types along the edges and creating some variation is a very quick and easy way uh, to get some scenery looking very nice along your creek sides and rivers and things. Uh, here is the Arkansas River, and you can see I've got even some stuff way over there. So I went over there to try to find some of the assets I had used. But uh, this whole process here took less than five minutes to kind of get all this done. I've got it sped up, obviously, but a uh, very straightforward process to uh, make some differences and some, some nice details added in here. So uh, you don't have to put them uh, so close that you cover every little inch of ground. You can leave some gaps. Keep in mind uh, the perspective or the angle you have when you're looking at them will make it such that um, it's not necessarily... Um, going to be very visible for you to see those gaps so sorry i had a little lapse in my mind there for a minute just it happens from time to time just adding a guardrail to the road nothing too major just one of those small details it's nice and easy to add but adds a lot of life of course traffic is another good thing i realized later my traffic was turned off but um, as you see me do in many of my route building videos before whenever you have fence lines always 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 add shrubs and trees to those fence lines that is a easy easy addition uh, whenever you have open fields, I already have some turf X on that field we just saw, but another thing you can do is add in some bushes and trees here and there. Uh, there are plenty of open fields that are, you know, completely cleared out, or if you're in the Midwest, there just isn't a tree for 5 billion miles. <laughs> but, uh, you know, most areas, even in open fields, they have uh, bushes and shrubs and trees here and there. And uh, as I've said before, a lot of that could be because birds fly over and drop seeds in the way that you know birds know how and sometimes they grow into trees and, and shrubs uh, here just kind of working on some parking lot details for this uh, little set of apartments and the the small shops back there so a um, couple of easy things you can do for apartment complexes or, or commercial businesses is you can uh, add in some grassy areas in front and decorate those with some different details i don't do uh like a, a top quality job here of doing this i'm going to come back to this little particular detail later i just wanted to kind of briefly show what you could do so just got some shrubs in there, um, got some grass, you know, and then I'm actually just going to leave it like that for now, but I definitely will come in later and, and dress it up a bit. But um, on my old route, the uh, North Texas Beltline, which is on the download station, it's a model railroad. I do have an area on there where I went into a lot of detail trying to uh, get some good areas in front of businesses and things to make it look nice. So here we're working on some houses. I had deleted uh, the assets that were sitting over here because they looked absolutely terrible and pixelated. Uh, in their day, they were great, but they are outdated. But these are much fresher assets. So just adding in some driveways, sidewalks, all those things. Uh, you know, this is one of those things when you're driving your train, you're not going to see the front of those houses. So I didn't really worry about going into too much detail. This is another thing about getting more for less. Uh, you know, it is great to super detail things. That is fantastic. If you like doing that, I applaud you. That is great. And there is definitely a time and place for that. Uh, but I really like to mostly focus on just getting the most life in a scene I can get with the least amount of effort or resources or assets. And so I try to create minimal variation when necessary. Uh, try to add in some randomness. But for the most part, I really try to make sure that things close to the track look good. Far from the track, you know, the much less detail. Um, but it's all about trying to get the most variation as quickly as possible. So could I add more trees to those yards? Absolutely. Could I add more bushes to those yards or add some grass? Yeah, totally. Could I add tables and junk and lawnmowers and cars and everything else? Totally I could. Uh, and those things are fine. But, um, you know, when you're driving by at 30, 40 miles an hour or you're doing switchy moves, you're not paying as much attention to those things. And, you know, when you add in trees and bushes on the fence line, it kind of blocks the view a little bit anyway. So... 
uh, these are what I call the the high value scenery items. So we're just we're, we're creating some life uh, without overdoing it. And you know, if I get bored later on, I will totally come in and overdo it, <laughs> but not doing that right now. And then uh, you know, anytime you have big parking lots for either businesses or residential areas, things like that, you've you've got to add cars. So um, I like to use these row of cars here for parking. Um, I wish there were more good car assets I could use. Uh, these are fine. I don't complain about them. Uh, but I would love to have uh, just more stuff that I can use when it comes to putting cars in parking lots. Um, it's just I feel it's just, just an area that's it's a little limited right now. Uh, here I have a fence to separate uh, the two properties. That is very reasonable. Uh, properties don't necessarily always share the same parking lot. So, And then kind of the same thing here, adding in another parking lot. Uh, with a few more apartments uh, and then kind of cleaning up the fence line so it just makes some quick changes with your with your scenery get some different paint textures on there very uh, create some variance and then come back and add some parked cars later a couple fence lines and you know you've got the gist of it so if I in my opinion when you're building a route if you will first go through and just get a lot of these quality of life things in where you just you rough it in there you get some stuff done, you get some life in there where it looks good, uh, you're going to feel a lot more uh, enjoyment when you're operating it than staring at the gray grid. And uh, some people, you know, build in a different style than I do, and that's fine. But um, some people get really bogged down with the super detailing, and they, you know, they just never move on from one area of their route. And they could build a route with 100 miles of track, but they're still super detailing the first mile, you know, a year later. And that's fine. I don't judge those people, and I'm not judging them now, but... Uh, I just feel like I get a lot more enjoyment from getting some decent looking scenery that looks fairly good. Of course, it could be perfect. It's not perfect. But it's pretty good. But getting some good looking scenery, good quality, um, high value stuff, you know, for the whole route, I feel like that just adds a lot more value. And so here, another great example, uh, getting some trees and stuff in. When you build some trees in an area, you don't have to pack the trees in as dense as they are in the real world to create a good looking forest. Uh, when you're driving by, you know, this scene here doesn't necessarily look like a forest, but um, I do have some other areas where I've built forest, and even still, they are nowhere near as dense as forests in the in uh, real life. Those forests, at least in the area of Texas I come from, um, are incredibly dense. So, um, And here, I'm just taking out some splines. These grass splines are actually some of the best grass splines I've ever seen. However, I still didn't want to use them because I'm going to replace them with Turfix. So Turfix is another thing that really goes down fast once you have a couple of layers made that you can use. Uh, it's just like painting on a texture. So Turfix, I have realized, um, is definitely a high value item. So I, I will use Turfix uh, in this route and any future routes I make. Um, here you can see some areas where I already had the Turfix. Um, but going in and getting those low shots, it just when you're closer to ground level, it's, it's just unbeatable. The grass moves in the wind. Uh, it, you can cr change up its variance, its density, its height. There are so many th ways you can modify your layers, and it, it just it just looks fantastic. So I love to go along the track side with uh, like a layer I have called short grass. Uh, and this is just short enough that if I have the track at its normal profile, it won't stick up through the ties. But, you know, since this track here is all kind of sunk into the ground, it does kind of come up over the track. But it doesn't bother me because these are just little spurs to industries and things. This kind of track is not going to be your nicely maintained track. Um, also, I've got a layer that I call long grass. I kind of put that in the more open areas, like the one I'm looking at right there. So the long grass definitely sticks up taller, but that makes it where it's more uh, visible. It also is more mobile when the wind as blowing it, you can see that more because it's taller, naturally. Another high-value item, easy to add, and uh, very crucial uh, to create some of that variance. So even on the industrial spurs, there are certain areas where I'll throw some of the tall grass in there uh, over the tracks, and that is absolutely uh, reasonable within the prototype. So, um, And then now, the next stage, getting some life in your industries. So you will be surprised how much you can bring an industry to life just by adding some trucks. You know, industries in the real world, especially in America, uh, if they get rail service, I guarantee you they absolutely still as well get truck service. Everybody gets truck service. And if you will go into your industries and create some space to put some trucks in there, even if they're not necessarily themed 100% the way they should, uh, but you just get some stuff it will really bring to life the scene that you're trying to work on. And so here I've got some some bulk trailers. 
Uh, I don't really care too much whether or not they're actually for grain or for denser materials or liquids. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, I'm just getting some life in there. And then creating some areas where they just store trailers kind of off to the side that aren't actually being loaded or unloaded. If you drive by a Walmart warehouse, it's going to have hundreds of trailers there. And only about 30 or 40 of those trailers are going to be sitting out of dock. The rest are going to be sitting off in the parking lot, either loaded waiting to depart or waiting to come up to the dock. Um, you can throw your tractor trailers in there and your 18 wheelers and all that stuff. And then, of course, you've got to make some space for parking. People work at these places. And if you just make some small parking lots and throw some cars in there, that will really help you eat up the space you have uh, and really bring things to life. So here, it's going to be another great example of how I don't do some super detailing. I definitely get, you know, cars in some parking spots and I get some parking lines down and all that stuff. But I don't go in there and and throw newspapers on the ground. <laughs> I mean, I might eventually, but, you know, this is my first pass, just adding some life and uh, making it feel like there's some activity going on here. So even just throwing a couple of forklifts on the platform, you know, I could do a lot more detail there. I could add in some pallets. I could add in drums, other things. Uh, but I just haven't done that yet, and that's fine. You know, I can always come back to it later. So this is all about how to get more with less. And you will be surprised, if you've never done it before, you will be surprised just how much you can get out of just a few small changes. And so far, we've only talked about, you know, three or four things. Adding bushes and shrubs along the edges of your creeks and rivers. Um, adding in some forests that aren't really too dense. Adding uh, trees and bushes in small fields. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, because I didn't really film a lot of it, but on the edge of your forest, if you throw some shrubs along just the edge to make it where you can't see, you know, trunks that are 500 yards away, <laughs> uh, it really adds some perspective. Because if you, you know, go into most forests, uh, you know, not too far from the road, that you know, your view is going to be pretty limited because of all the undergrowth. And you can simulate that in, in the game as well. And that will really help you to uh, kind of break up your view, which is the whole point of having a bunch of trees and stuff. Uh, and then now, of course, we're detailing industries, adding in vehicles. So there are some other vehicle additions that I add off screen here uh, that I won't show in the uh, sped up clips, but you'll see them in the cinematics, kind of the finished product, which is nice. Uh, but then, of course, I just go through here and continue to replace grass blinds. I don't have anything against grass blinds. And in fact, some of these grass blinds I'll actually end up keeping. But uh, any chance I get, I'm definitely going to use Turfex because the the resulting effects are just so incredible. And since I intend to eventually move into 22 uh, with Survey 2.0 and all that stuff, um, I just I know I need to move on to Turfex. So that's another part of the reason we're doing it. But um, I always appreciate you guys watching. And here, not too long from now, we're going to need to wrap it up. So uh, stay tuned for more videos. I've got some operations videos coming, some more route videos coming with uh, route building and stuff. But uh, it is always great to have you guys on the channel. And thank you guys for watching, for liking, for commenting. Uh, please continue to do those things. And I'll go ahead and sign off now because we're going to head to the cinematics. And you guys can enjoy the view, and I'll see you next time.